Let's go, yes. Oh, I am so excited about today's show. We're talking about virtual wholesaling, wholesaling from anywhere. If you have a computer and you have a cell phone, you will be unstoppable. It will work 100% if you do. So we're gonna give you all the tools and tactics and I'm gonna interview the best of the best of the best when it comes to virtual wholesaling here on today's show. Let me tell you about the lineup. First, I'm gonna go break down all the 17 steps of, of every single wholesale deal so that you understand and you can have a checklist of everything that needs to happen in a wholesale deal so that there's no mystery to it. And then we're gonna break apart which parts can we do virtually and which parts do we need to be face-to-face, knee-to-knee, belly-to-belly, all right? So I think that that's gonna be really, really, really important. Then, zooming in here to be part of the show is Daniel Nissim. Daniel Nissim lives in Tel Aviv, Israel. And he's doing business in Pittsburgh, and he does multiple, multiple, multiple six figures every single year. And he's never been to Pittsburgh. I mean, he's never he's never stepped foot in Pittsburgh. Isn't that absolutely incredible? I mean, who better to teach us how to go out and find deals that are not in our backyard than somebody that doesn't even live in the country? Not only that, I'm going to double up. Wait, I'm not going to get there yet. I'm going to leave that for a second. Then I'm going to break down the top 50 virtual wholesaling markets. All right. This is data. This is science. We put it into this algorithm and I'm going to show you the top 50 markets so that if you have that question, where should I start wholesaling in from a virtual standpoint? We're going to give you we're going to give you the solution, the answer right away. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just start taking massive, imperfect action. All right. Then we've got another another virtual wholesaler that's doing incredible business, over 100 deals a year. He lives in Europe, and he's doing business in Florida, and that's Dimitri Von Kamp. He's absolutely incredible, and he's going to blow your mind. He's going to absolutely blow your mind with every single step that he uses to do deals here, and and he he has actually been to Florida. So a little disclaimer there, but uh, he's, he's absolutely incredible and he does a lot of land deals. So you want to stick around to that. And then after that, I'm going to be breaking down my three-year plan to get to a million dollars a month wholesaling real estate. Ooh, it, does, oh, it feels, it, it's so exciting. The plan is so exciting. The breakdown is so exciting, but it's very simple. And I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to chart it on this. uh, We're we're going to show you uh, and chart it, I guess, on this channel um, as we go, as we go and and, and advance and and start taking the actions uh, to be able to grow it to a million dollars a month. Uh, It'll be in 10 different markets. It's, It's super exciting. And then we're going to round off the show. The headliner is going to be Rafael Cortez, the incredible Rafael Cortez. He's done, I don't know. 2000 wholesale deals. I remember in 2015, I would go every appointment that I would go on Rafael Cortez's business card was at that house. That's how good he was. That's how good he was uh, in in in-person appointments. But now he switched that to virtual appointments and he's going to give us a whole breakdown. So there should be no stone left unturned when it comes to virtually wholesaling. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So strap in. We're here for 120 minutes. This will work if you do. Remember this. And I I always think about this in the morning. Uh, It's something that's just, I don't know, I must have said it to myself a bunch of times, or it's just repeating in my head over and over and over, uh, is the fact that I'm one conversation away, just one conversation away from an incredible opportunity. One conversation away, the deal of a lifetime comes around once a week, once a week, every single week. It just depends on how many conversations, how many quality conversations we're having with motivated property owners, property owners that will trade price for speed and convenience. Because remember, remember when you're speaking with the property owner, what we're looking for are the property owners that will trade that price for speed and convenience. They want to get rid of this property. You got to, you get in your mind, you have to think of wholesaling real estate 
like there, there's a couple of different analogies that I think really make sense. All right. The first one is a pawn shop, right? You take anything into a pawn shop. You take uh, you take a baseball card, you take a, uh, a ring, you take in a watch, you take in a, a guitar, and you know that that pawn shop's not going to give you full market value for it, but you need the cash now, right? You just don't, you, you don't need this stuff anymore. It's just sitting there. It's just cluttering. It's just something else in your life that you want, that you don't mind getting rid of. That's the, that's the mentality of property owners. People do that with property. They're just like, just take it, get it off my hands. I don't care. I just want it to be as simple and easy as possible. All right. The other one is if you've ever bought a, a car at a dealership and you turn your car into them, like you, you trade it in your car and you know that you're not getting Kelly blue book value for it. You know that if you went and you cleaned it up and you put new rims on it, new tires, and you got the, you got the, you got all the, the seats real supple and they're smelling good and it doesn't smell like you or your kids or whatever else has happened in that car over the, the time that it's been on this planet. Uh, and, and, and you get it buffed out and you get it looking perfect that you could get close to Kelly blue book value, right? what we considered Zillow price in real estate. This is kind of Kelly Blue Book and Zillow are kind of hand in hand, right? If you can understand that. But we don't. We turn in our cars because we don't, we don't want to deal with that. We don't want to put it on the market and sell it ourselves and go through that whole process. Just take the car. Give me the new car. I know that I'm not getting the, the full value. I know that you, you dealership are going to make a profit on it, but I don't care. I'm done with it. I'm moving on from this. That's what people do with real estate. So just understand that that happens every single second of every single minute of every single hour of every single day. Just depends on when you're going to find yours. And it comes down to having quality conversations with property owners. So let's break down the 17 steps to every wholesale deal before we invite Daniel Nissim from Tel Aviv, Israel, to tell us how to virtually wholesale from anywhere. All right. Let's look at this. 17 steps. Number one. When you're starting out in this business, if you don't have a big marketing budget, you're going to have to trade your time and your talents for uh, for money. You, you don't have a huge marketing budget, so you're going to have to go out there and you're going to have to be very proactive. You're going to have to find a list to target. All right. Now, some people like targeting real estate agents. That's fine. You, you target real estate agents. You try to get some referrals. Maybe you're targeting the MLS. You're looking at listed properties that are on there. It's highly competitive. You got to make sure that uh, you get a really good discount or you catch those properties quick because a lot of the, the buyers, a lot of the investors have already seen that deal and either passed on it or they said, you know what, uh, I don't want to pay you when I can just go on the market. So, But you can certainly find deals in the MLS. You can certainly find deals uh, by getting by talking to real estate agents before they put those properties on the market. Now, my favorite is to go direct to seller, okay? Go direct to the property owners. I see an ugly house. I'm going to get the phone number for that property owner. I'm going to call them up. If, if, they, if, if there's not a phone number, I'm going to knock on the door. I'm going to send them a handwritten note. I'm going to do something to, to get a hold of that property owner. Very basic, very simple. The first 20 deals that I did were just driving around town, finding ugly houses, getting their address, writing them down, and, uh, and, and calling up the property owner finding some way to, to, to make contact with that property owner. Now, the best list right now, by far, it's not even close, is the AI-generated list, right? This is, this is machine learning, looking at the person and looking at the property, smooshing them together and coming up with the most likely people to sell in the next 90 days. And you can get that list right at flipfinder.ai, flipfinder.ai. You can go and find that list. It looks like this right here. Matt's going to switch that up. Boom. Uh, lead pipes, flip finder right here. It literally shows you the most likely people to sell at a discount. This is our number one list right now. This is what we're going after at flipfinder.ai. So we go after those properties and, um, and, and, and we start having a conversation with the property owner, right? Finally, AI is caught up with everything and they look at all the trillions of different data points and they figure it out, the people that are likely to sell. You've got the ugly properties that you go out and you hustle around and you find all those from driving around. But if you just want to pull it from your computer and find the most likely, boom, you get the AI list. So you get the AI list, you're calling the list and, you're, and that goes to step number two. All right. Step number two is to have a quality conversation. We have to talk to these property owners. We have to talk to these property owners, okay? And by the way, if you want to virtually drive for dollars, you can do that. 
If you want to just sit on your computer and pull an AI list or a tired landlord list or probates or pre-foreclosures, whatever list that you want to pull, you can pull that right from your computer. So in your mind, I want you to think of, okay, how much of this is face-to-face -face with the property owner? So far, none. I'm going to tell you this right now. 95% uh, of this business is done on the phone. 95%. And remember this, the most powerful people on the planet are effective communicators. How do we become effective communicators, Brent? I don't talk to a lot of people. I don't have adult conversations with property owners a lot. I, 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 haven't, had, I haven't had any conversations with property owners a lot. Then do it. The best time to start is now. Massive, imperfect action. Massive, imperfect action. Start. The more people that you talk to in, in, in the shorter amount of time, the more skills you're going to build. All right. So then you make contact and you have a quality conversation. Number three, you pre-qualify them. You pre-qualify them based on four things. The condition of the property, their timeline to sell that property, their motivation to sell that property, and their price. That's it. That is the skeleton of every conversation. I've said it probably, I don't know, I, I have maybe 1,500 videos on this channel. and I've said it in probably 1,495 of them. But it's so impactful because I remember when I got started out, I was so nervous to get on the phone because I didn't know what I was trying to figure out. I didn't know what I was trying to find out. So I never want you to have that nervousness. I want to remove all the obstacles so that you can go and have those quality conversations. But you pre-qualify them. And pre-qualifying is on the phone. Condition, timeline, motivation, price. Condition, timeline, motivation, price. All right. Now... You understand, wait a second, this is an actual lead. This is somebody that will actually do business, has the potential to do business with me. Now it's time to actually do some due diligence. Now listen, due diligence is number four. Due diligence is not number two. It's not I get this list and then I start comping it and I start looking to see how much their mortgage is and I start seeing how long they've owned the property. I don't care. I don't care. The fact is, when you're number three, the, the, when you're pre-qualifying, condition, timeline, motivation, price, you're looking to figure out one thing. Have they made the decision that they're going to sell their property? If they've made the decision that they're going to sell their property, then you do the due diligence. Then you do the due diligence. Because if they haven't made the decision, then you're just spinning your wheels. You're not going to convince them. We are deal finders. We're not deal creators. We are deal finders, not deal creators, okay? It's the absolute fact, right? We, we, are, we are archaeologists, right? We're finding these unbelievable things, right? We're not fabricating them and making them, okay? So make sure that you understand that they have to have made the decision they're going to sell this property. It's not something that you're going to plant in their head and they're like, oh, yeah, I definitely should. I definitely want to. Then you do your due diligence, right? This is when you comp. This is when you figure out what's going on with the property. This is when you figure out, okay, will they consider a cash offer or do I have to see if they would do owner financing, do something more creative, right? So in that due diligence, that's when you're comping. That's when you're looking at, okay, what can I offer? What kind of offer can I make here? All right. Number five is your lead follow-up sequence. Very simple, guys. Very simple lead follow-up. By the way, none of this is face-to-face. None of this yet is face-to-face. -face. Now, some people might not want to talk on the phone with you and, and require somebody to go to their house to, to talk to them about all these things, to really open up, to pre-qualify them, but 99.9999% don't. So don't, don't worry about that. If that's a concern, your head throw it away. It, it, it just doesn't happen, not, not, uh, not in real life, all right? So you're doing your lead follow-up sequence. Very simple. If it's a hot lead, you're calling them every day. A hot lead somebody that's going to sell in the next 30 days. Okay? That's it. If it's a warm lead, it's between 30 and 90 days. You're going to call them at least every week. Okay? And if it's 90 days to forever, you call them once a month. Very simple. And something that we do every single day in the Rhino Tribe is we have these... Um, Live, live lead calls where people are calling their leads live and we call, nobody answers. We'll call again, nobody answers. We triple call them. I would say it's 50-50 on the, the, on the third immediate call that you're trying to reach out to the people on these calls that we have live, people pick up. And that, that's the same with uh, Chad, my uh, junior acquisition manager. 
So we triple dial, boom, 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 boom. People pick up. They're like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? And you'd be surprised. They're not like, why are you calling me three times in a row? This is ridiculous. They don't. They really don't. It's more curious that they have. Your curiosity that they have, I should say. So do your lead follow-up sequence all on the phone. Now, here we go. Number six. Number seven. This is where it's there is a sticking point. The appointment. Virtual appointment, or is it going to be a in-person appointment? Do you need to have boots on the ground if you are going to be making offers to virtual sellers, to, to sellers that are in your virtual market? What does that look like? Or are you just going to send a um, an offer and make sure that you're on the phone with them and go over the offer while you're on the phone with them? Let me tell you this, you need to have an appointment to go over the purchase agreement live, live. As a professional courtesy, I want to make sure that I answer any questions that you have about the agreement before you approve it. Not sign, approve. Thank you, Jerry Norton. Beautiful terminology. Remember, the most powerful people are the best communicators, right? So how do you make it not seem like it's this big, like they're, they're signing their life away type of thing, right? Approve it. And you go through it. You go through it if you're virtual. You go through the, the purchase agreement live with them. Get on Zoom if you need to. That'd be even better. FaceTime them. Get on the phone with them. Do not send offers in the mail and just hope and pray that they're going to sign it. And I mean physical mail and digital mail called email. Oh, I'm going to just send the, the DocuSign or the e-signature and just uh, hope that they sign it. And then all of a sudden the nervousness starts creeping in. They're like, yeah, 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 I'll sign it. And you're checking. Oh, they looked at it. Oh, yes, yes, they looked at it. Yes. Oh, they're going to sign it soon. It's going to come soon. And then it doesn't come. And then it just, all of a sudden they're not answering their phone anymore. All of a sudden they're not responding to your text messages anymore. Are they leveraging my offer? What is happening? Were they not really serious about selling their property? Oh my gosh. Did they get another, did they get another offer that's higher? What, what, what is going on with this? Right? All of these, all of these thoughts going on in our head. You can remove all that if you have a appointment where you go over the purchase agreement live with them on the phone, in person. Make sure you do this. We're going to get into it and, and go through the process with uh, Daniel Nissim coming up here very soon with uh, Dimitri Von Kamp, over 100 deals a year virtually, and then with Rafael Cortez, uh, who's, who's doing the same in, in several different markets. So make sure that you stay tuned. But guys, by the way, we're coming up with the 50, um, coming up in the show, the top 50 virtual wholesale markets um, to, to uh, target this year based on a bunch of factors that I'm going to break down. And also I'm going to be breaking down my million dollar a month plan uh, at the back end of the show. So make sure that you stick around. And if you're not subscribed, make sure that you hit that subscribe. And uh, if you're liking this so far, hit the like button. That helps. And it's just a good, it's good vibes. You know what I mean? Gives you good vibes. Next is your offer presentation. This is where you're doing it live or, or, or um, you're, you're going through the purchase agreement. And then you get your contract acceptance. Boom. Exciting. They just accepted your contract. Absolutely incredible. Guys, this is steps one through eight. Every single deal. Boom, 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 boom. Contract acceptance. Now let's go to number nine. Open up escrow and deposit your earnest money. Open up escrow immediately. As soon as you get that purchase agreement back, you're going to open escrow. You're going to send it to your title company or closing attorney. And you're going to put a subject line on the top of that that says new escrow dash the address. And you're going to send it to your title company or closing attorney. And then you're going to deposit whatever the agreed earnest deposit is. Because remember this, in some states, not all, you need consideration. Consideration is some sort of deposit, some sort of uh, a financial deposit to make that purchase agreement valid. Okay. So make sure that you get that in. Don't mess around with this. Don't mess around with this. Get it in. Because it, it, it's just, it, it, it's one, it's showing that you're committed and that you're, you're um, doing what you said that you would do in the purchase agreement. So don't breach your own agreement. Deposit your earnest money. 
All right. Now, this is 10 through 17 is where dispo companies come in or people that do um, micro flips or daisy chain or whatever you want to call it is. They go, OK, listen, you got that contract signed. I'll help you sell it, bro. And we'll we'll split it 50 50. This is usually where they come into into play. Right. Or joint venture partnerships. Right. You start marketing your contract to cash buyers. By the way, marketing your contract to cash buyers, cash buyer inspection and assigning the contract to the contract with buyer, um, you might need boots on the ground for your cash buyer inspection. That's it. So if we look at this, we're talking about your offer presentation and your cash buyer inspection to have somebody physically at those properties. Do you have to? No. Is it good? Sure. Can you do it virtually? 100%. People are doing it. People are doing it right now. Since this show started, there's probably like a thousand deals that have already been done. You know what I mean? So um, you 100% can do this with just your phone and just a computer. All right. But if you need boots on the ground, we'll get some we'll get some advice from the guys that are pros at it coming up. All right. You got your your marketing, your can, contract, your cash buyers. By the way, if you've never done a deal, you need to print this out. You need to pull, put this like screenshot it, go to wholesalinginc.com, download it, uh, print it out, have it by you. I mean, you could put a whole binder together from the stuff that we have at wholesalinginc.com that you could just download. So make sure that you're taking advantage of that because that's the whole point. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and just, just checklist it so that you know, what's the next step. What's the next step? What's the next step? All right. Uh, awesome. Daniel Nissim is in the waiting room guys. This is going to be absolutely incredible. You've got your cash buyer inspection. Uh, next is you're going to assign the contract to your buyer. You make sure that the earnest money is deposited with your, uh, with the title company. You should get a refund of your earnest deposit. As soon as the new earnest deposit comes in, remember all wholesaling is, if you really boil it down is somebody will pay us. We put together a purchase agreement. It's not this size. It's much bigger than this. Typically uh, eight by 11, eight and a half by 11. Um, but you've got a purchase agreement. That's an asset. People want to buy this. People want to buy this from us. So when they buy this from us, essentially what we're doing is we're crossing off our name in the purchase agreement, putting their name on, and then they're paying us what's called an assignment fee. And so once you assign that deal, the contract, you're going to send that assignment agreement over to the title company. They're going to deposit their earnest money. Number 13, make sure they d deposit their earnest money, 5,000 non-refundable. 5,000 non-refundable. How do I know if these are good buyers, Brent? How do I know that they're real? How do I know that this deal is going to get closed? How do I know that the seller's not going to be mad at me because uh, the, the deal doesn't get closed? 5,000 non-refundable earnest deposit. That's a really, it's, a, it's enough to, 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 to make people second guess uh, if, they, if they don't think that they can get that deal done, right? It makes people more serious about the deal, all right? Next is through the title company, they do their job. They make sure that any liens that are on the property get paid off. They make sure that there's nothing goofy going on with the ownership of that deal. And then it's clear to close. Those are C2, C2TC, oh my gosh, or C2C, whatever, is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful phrase in this business. Because now you know that there's nothing crazy going on with the ownership or with any liens. And then the, then the buyers get their funds in. You check to make sure that the buyers get their funds in. Hey, title company. Hey, closing attorney. Is the buyer's funds in? Yeah. Okay, great. And then you close the deal. And then number 17 is the best one. You get paid. You get paid. Now, the interesting thing is, I used to, it was always like, yes, oh, the paid, yes, 17. That's like the best step in the 17-step process. I don't think so. I think number two is. I think the quality conversation with a property owner is. That's where everything comes from. You know what I mean? We don't get to 17 without number two. Isn't that wild? So you'll find that you will become kind of addicted to having these conversations with property owners. I mean, the, the funds come in, but once those funds start coming in, you start getting, you know, that bank account that's got 100 grand in it, 200 grand in it, 300 grand in it. Um, the, the, the shine wears off a little bit and the hunt is all that's left. And the hunt is the exciting part. So just put it in your brain now that the hunt is the most exciting part. 
And if you're in hustle season, if you're in hunting season, if you're going after all these properties, you're making all these calls, you're getting rejected left and right, people are telling you no. That's the fun part. That's the exciting part. Because most people won't go through that. And because most people won't go through that, that gives you the skills. And those skills are something that can't be taken away from you. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. It doesn't matter sickness or some sort of crazy thing that happens. Um, you come back to, you have the skills. You have the skills of effectively communicating with property owners. And if you can effectively communicate with property owners that are motivated to sell their properties, you will make millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. And millions. You will. Absolute fact. There's no replacing that. So start building, start, start building up your, your skill base now. Start talking to people. Talking to people. There you go. Right? Awesome. All right. Well, listen, it's that time. We're going to bring on Daniel Nissim here in just a second. I've known Daniel for years. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's coming from a, a place in the world w which is going through a, a lot, an incredible amount. Um, Israel and in, 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 uh, everything going on in the Holy Land is, is just wild right now. And he's still running his business. He's still doing this business virtually and, um, and doing it successfully. I mean, like if, if Daniel can do this business, anybody can do this business. And not just saying like, like Daniel taught himself English watching like cartoons or something, I think. But he'll, 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 he'll give you a little bit more of a background. But I mean, it wasn't just like, oh, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and I know everything about the market. And I know everything about, you know, I get an idea of what my parents bought houses for and this type of thing. And, and uh, I come from a family of real estate or anything like that. He doesn't. He taught himself English from watching like American television. Absolutely. Isn't that incredible? Absolutely incredible. So is he ready, Matt? Daniel Nissim, come on up. Hey, Brent. How you doing, man? What's up, Good man? Good to see you, guy. You're muted. <laughs> muted? Well, there he is. Sorry, a little bit guys? of a delay. Great to see you. How did you... When, when did you, you get in, into real estate? So I started back then in the middle of the pandemic. I think it was in 20, 2020, actually. Yeah, that was in what? 2020. And it's funny because you mentioned about the cartoons and everything, which is true, by the way, guys. I mean, I know for you guys, it's literally, you you know, you guys are literally born with the language, right? For me, it's just, it was just like straight Hebrew. That's it. Um, so I had to watch your your TV and everything and your movies and everything, too. I could barely speak like a couple of years ago, seriously. So, yeah, it's true. Well, not anymore. You're doing it now. So <laughs> you virtually, you're, you're virtually wholesaling. How's your business this year? So it's, it's been okay. It's been okay. I think we could have done a bit better. I told you about that because what we were trying to do this year was actually go broad with PPC right now. And, you know, and you can tell like PPC has been pretty good for you this year because you're trying to do it with locally. Whenever you do it a bit nationwide approach, it's a bit different. We had a bit of success with that. It's still like a game we're still trying to, to figure it out. Um, but we're still cold calling and, you know, talking to people. It's still, you know, it's the, it's the only thing you can always do and it's always going to work, right? So the question, yeah, of course. The, the question I have is, do you need boots on the ground? Because I just went through the 17 steps of every wholesale deal. And really, there's two kind of sticking points, right? There's the offer presentation or meeting the property owner. So they feel comfortable doing business with you. But then there's also like your, your buyer inspection. You know, mm -hmm. do you have to have somebody there for that if it's occupied by a tenant, if it's occupied by the actual owner? So talk to me about those two sticking points and, and do you yeah. have boots on the ground and what do you use them for? Yeah, so great question. We typically have like two options for these, okay? Depends, because like some people, and I, have, I know like great people that do literally everything over the phone, like literally they will even close over the phone. We do it as well, by the way. It just depends on the seller and the situation. For example, uh, for some sellers, they would say, how can you guys even buy a property without being in the house? So what we like to say is like saying something like, hey, you know, during the pandemic in 2020, we couldn't really get into these properties. So we have to, you know, and people still have to sell the properties. So we used to, we actually came up with a formula and, and a way to buy these properties over the phone, because that's basically, that, that's pretty common these days, you know, to buy properties over the phone. The pandemic changed everything. We count like the Uber of the like of the taxi industry right everything in the past used to be just straight taxis but now everybody you know kind of like i used to buy you know taking ubers we're the same thing we're basically buying properties over the phone it's, it's a new thing but it's pretty common 
Um, so that's if they if they're like in a position to actually get a deal done over the phone. But if they want to have if they want to meet someone belly to belly, what we like to do is we like to get local agents in the market, get the best one. You can go to realtor.com, see who's the agent that made the most transaction, sold properties in the zip code where you're sending the guy or the girl to uh, and say, hey, guys, I know you guys used to do showings for free. Here's what I'm suggesting. OK, I have that property over there. I'm willing to pay you 50 to 75 bucks per visit. Just be friendly over there, have a friendly conversation with them. And then you can either put me on speaker when you get to the, the offer part, okay? Or just send me the photos. I'm gonna call them the same day and try to lock it up on the same day. But, um, and then if we'll list the property on the MLS or fix and flip it, wholesale, whatever we do with it, we can use you also for the showing and pay you another $75 just for the showing. Cause you know, they also kind of like got used to do it for free for other people, showings and other stuff. So we actually pay them for these things. That's incredible. So first, I want to I, I want to make sure that we don't just uh, brush over this. When you're mm -hmm. you have conversations with the property owners that say, "Hey, listen, because of what happened with in 2020, we yeah. switched our business model to be able to do this over the phone." Yeah, just like people you know used to come to the office all the time, and now they are working from home. Same thing, man. We're using the same because that relates. They understand what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Okay, that, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, great. And then. Um, if you need some, you, you go to the top agent, why wouldn't, why would the top agent care about 50 or 75 bucks? Why, why you know, so, aren't they looking to do, uh, like bigger deals to get paid bigger commissions? Why would they waste their time with 50 bucks? A hundred percent. Great question. So first of all, they may have team of people and typically the top producer, they have team of people and they have the rookies, the people that are young and hungry. They will send the rookies where they're super friendly, super nice. You will talk to them and give them instructions before, by the way. And then you basically work with that team to actually sell the property if you need later on or give them a fee just for signing the paper. What I like to do with the people over there is say, hey, who's the, 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 the most like the hungriest or like, you know, the, the one who's trying to get things done, like the go getter in the team. Let me talk to them. I'll, I'll give them the instructions if they can get. And when I talk to them and say, if you can get it under paper, besides the $75, I'll also give you $250, just, you know, another bonus just to get them basically the paperwork signed if you get them. So then they also have basically congruent, uh, basically interest with you to try to get it done. Um, so that's what we do, especially if we get all the, I would say before I send them, I also make sure we're in the ballpark with the money with the sellers. Right. And so walk me through this. Let's role play this a little bit. You, sure. you find, you find a realtor on realtor.com. They're mm -hmm. doing business in the zip code that you just, you're getting close to a deal. You you, yeah. you pre-qualified them. Everything's going well, but they want somebody to come over, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you have a conversation. What is that? Kind of, you call up the yeah. team or the the phone number, and you hey, say, "Hey, this what? Is Brent." Yeah, this is Brent. Hey, Brent. How you doing, man? Good morning. This is Daniel. So here's the thing. I, I saw you're doing a lot of transactions in the area. We also do actually a lot of deals in around. I just want to reach out and see if we can work on a deal together. Here's the info that I have for it. Do you have a minute? Boom. And yeah. Then I talk. Cool. Um, so basically, I got a property owner. I'm not sure if it's going to be a good fit for a listing or if it's going to be a good fit for us as an investors, but I just need someone. I'm, I won't be able to be in town, you know, for the visit. I'm just looking for someone who can take, you know, photos for us and we can decide together if it's something that we're going to keep uh, for our portfolio or flip it or if it's something that's basically going to take it to the MLS with you guys. Do you have someone that will be more than happy to meet the seller? And just we just need someone friendly, you know, that can talk to the seller over there and meet them belly to belly on Wednesday at 10 a.m. So are you do, are you looking for a listing agent for this? Where where so, where are you where are you located? Yeah, we're actually in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we work in other twelve states right now. So you know we kind of like get a lot of sellers that work with our company, and we're searching for another investor that can, or sorry, another agent that can help us with that deal because we're not sure if it's going to be a good fit for our company as a fixer upper, or basically as a listing. We're not sure what we're going to do with the property, so we just need someone like a boots on the ground can go take a look for the, uh, of the property. And we don't want you to do it for free, of course. We'll pay you for that. You know, we typically pay seventy five dollars just for that visit. Just you know, simple photos, and you know, then we can decide what we're going to do with the property. Do you have someone that is interested? So you need you need somebody on my team to go out there and take photos of of properties that you're buying. Yeah. So basically, it's, we have a meeting with that seller. We're not sure if we're going to buy it and what are we going to do with the property. We have multiple of exit strategies. OK, we may just list the property. We may flip it. We may. Sometimes what we do, we joint venture with other investors in town. Depends on like how many projects we have right now on our plate. You know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. Are you, would you be able to help us with that? Because we're looking for go-getters, people that can get things done. And we really need to get, send someone over on Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, it's around. It's, it's by our office. That's not a big deal. I'm just not real sure 
if you what you're looking like long term with this are, are you looking to have us listed once you flip it are you having us like get a buyer's fee for working oh. with the seller like what does that look like yeah so basically the only thing we need from now guys is just basically to take the photos of the property and then whenever we get it and send it to the team we can decide whether we're going to flip it whether we're going to list it with you guys whether what we're going to do with the property we just need to first of all put our step in the door you know just have friend conversation with the seller over there awesome yeah no problem so great love it so dan l- let me ask you this so a couple of things i think in my mind and maybe in the audience's mind is well wait a second you don't have it under contract yet they know they're going to see the contract and the price. They're going to know it's a smoking deal. Why don't they backdoor you? Why don't why yeah. don't they go and lock it up? Great question. Uh, and that was my first question I asked my mentor. Like, why would someone not, not try to go around? You know, and just like I exactly. Didn't see this comment, but it's here. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. First of all, realtors have their have ethics. Like you know, they have their uh, regulations, and they're also you can always go out and basically go after them. They don't want to go through that road because you can go right. through a broker and basically kind of like basically. Uh, destroy their reputation uh so that's why we like to work more with realtors because they're like you know uh they have have these regulations but i would say one more thing what i like to do with them and i pr- kind of like didn't emphasize that part with the conversation with you brent is the fact that we like to say hey we're working in town we have a bunch of deals together we're trying to build a long-term relationship with you like or with someone who's go-getter in town yeah. uh, i'll be more than happy that to work with you it's not just this one just one just you know we'll have more besides this one and whenever they have it. an opportunity to work with you for long term, like why would they do it? Why would they? You're literally giving them free money. You're calling yes. out of the blue for to give to give them an opportunity to make money. Why would they do it? Yeah, I love it. The other thing, the, the other side of it that I really love is we're we're calling a lot of people, we're texting a lot of people, we're doing a lot of marketing. You could just put it under the umbrella of marketing. We're doing a mm-hmm. lot of marketing in the area, and a lot of the property owners that we talk to. They want more than we can offer them, you know. They, they and and they should. They're great properties. They'd be great listings. They should put it on the market. Is that something that I can send to you and you take care of those people and you help me with the the ones that I want to buy? A hundred percent. And that's what I, I literally got a text as we speak from uh, one of the agents that we have in Pennsylvania, where he was. He's that he'll ha- he's actually helping me take a property to the MLS. It's an ovation uh, deal. Uh, when he's he's literally getting like three percent out of the deal. Uh, he's selling to a cash buyer on the MLS for us, you know. Love it. So just like it's it's we, we do it all the time with them. It's like a win win for them. The, why why would they do it? You know, it's free money for them, free leads, awesome. free everything. Uh, absolutely incredible. And then what about like the buyer showings? How often oh, are you having people go? So for buyer funny. Ones? Yeah, it's so funny because I, I I was in Pittsburgh, uh, one of our markets, uh, like a year or something ago, and I was literally there. But I still didn't went to the show. I didn't go to the show. Anymore. You have still. been to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I have, I have been there one time, like a couple of times, actually. I told Pittsburgh. everybody you haven't been there. No, no, no. I bought properties over there before I, I before I ever, ever been to Pittsburgh. Only after I, I, oh, I bought a couple of properties, I actually went yeah. to see what's going on over there. It was so funny. Um, it, it was like, you know, whenever you play like a game on PlayStation, then you get into the game to see it's like real human beings. You know, that, that's how I felt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> crazy, man. But anyway, I was there. And I still didn't, didn't go to the showing. Why? Because in my opinion, showing is a waste of time. Like seriously, it's such a waste of time. If I, and I literally paid someone $50 to be in that showing, like 50 to $75, because it's going to be the same agent that you talk to them right now, they will also get paid for the showing. And the instructions, you basically just want to send simple instructions. Hey, your goal is to make sure all the people come in, all the people go out, and nobody's talking to the seller. If they want to ask any questions, tell them to talk to me. That's it. Super simple. You don't need to have someone sophisticated over there. Do you send them like a, a a sheet that gives like all the breakdown of what you'll pay for each uh, each little job? Uh, I, I, one of my friends, actually, another guy from Israel, he did it in the past. He was hiring people for like, you know, admin work and then say, yep. I'll, I'll pay you global like thousand bucks and you'll do like X, Y, Z for me. Like you do the showing, you do the, that. Some people do it. Uh, I don't like to do it because then you don't, I like to work with like screws in my business. So if something's not working or someone is taking too much you know, responsibility, I can always replace them in someone else. Yep. Um, so for me, just now I literally pay them per showing 75, 50 to $75 per showing uh, and just give them instructions. I can give them a loom video. Are you familiar with loom where you just screen yourself? And say, you just yep. it all the time. Hey guys, here's what we need to do. When you get to the door, here's the things you'll say, like exactly get, walk them through that. And that that's it. You're incredible. How, how many deals have you done since 2020? Ballpark. 
almost 60, 70, I think, something like that. I don't Incredible. Know. 70 deals. So I think sometimes, I, you know, you stop counting sometimes, you know, after you just do too many. And guys, if I can do it, I'm not saying it to break, guys. If, if I'm literally, I put it in the speed, guys, a couple of years ago. If I can do it, like, why can't you do it? Seriously, like, it just, it's a no-brainer. You're the man. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for being on here. You're absolutely incredible. He runs a, um, a support call every single week in the Rhino tribe, uh, teaching everybody uh, how to do this and, and, and helping them out with their virtual business. So thank you, Daniel. You're incredible. Go out there, crush it. Love you, brother. See ya. Look at that. 70 deals. 70, I, I don't even know how far away Israel is from Pittsburgh. It can't be close. It's got to be like over 1,000 miles. Maybe 2,000. Can somebody put it in the chat or in the comments how far? And he's in 10 other markets. He's in 10 other markets. Absolutely incredible, which leads us to the top 50 markets. This is incredible. We, we put a lot of work into this. This is using, um, if you go in, let me, let me just pull this up, Matt. Um, let me go into Zillow here because Zillow does a really good job of their research. So let me go to their main page here and you can just share this. Um, where is their, the, there's your agent finder, by the way. Um, there is research. Where is their research thing? Research, boom, down at the bottom. Look at this, okay? So they have all sorts of stuff. I mean, they have really, really, really deep research that you can get in here um, for, for housing data. I mean, these, these things are really big and really bulky and don't it, it, like totally over my head. I've played around with it a little bit. It's not too complex, um, but we pulled all the data here. And let me just, um, if you'll full screen me, Matt, I'll go through, here you go. This is, the, this is what we did here. We did population size over 200,000. Okay, we did um, population growth had to be positive population growth over the last five years. Average values between 200 and 500,000. Six month appreciation as of October 2023, because that's all they had so far. It had to be a positive. Three year average appreciation over 10,000. And then we got rid of uh, some of the, um, the, the, the bigger markets like Phoenix, San Diego, um, uh, Manhattan, some of those right? Um, Seattle, some of the, some of the really bigger markets to come up with the like kind of niche markets, right? What are the niche markets that we can go after? So look at this, look at this. I almost want this to be a mystery, Matt. Don't make this too big because I want people to guess, but you're making it big, Matt. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, no, no, let's get it small. Let's go through the top 10 and ma make it a mystery. Uh, now who cares? Let's just go for it. I don't know why I'm playing around. Make it big here. Number one, Orlando. Number two, Charlotte. Number three, Columbus, Indianapolis, Providence, Rhode Island, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Worcester, Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. We've got Greenville, South Carolina, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Bakersfield, Knoxville, El Paso, Allentown. Now, uh, that's the top 15, uh, actually, and Columbus, South Carolina. The interesting thing here, guys, is uh, I think that of the top 50, uh, 50, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 of the top 50 are in the Carolinas. Isn't that crazy? 15 out of the, or what was it 15, 13, 15 out, out of the top 50 are in the Carolinas. What's going on in the Carolinas? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Yeah, it's the, they're, they're hot, hot markets, I guess. Um, and the reason, let me, let me go back to this real quick, guys. The reason I think that this is important to look at um, hold on. Oh, geez. Where'd it go? Here we go. Um, is because population growth matters. Just put me big. I'll just talk about it, Matt. Um, population, Matt, uh, population growth and population size matters, right? I like being over 200,000 for population because it gives you room to scale, right? It gives you room to scale population growth being positive, you know, or people coming through it. Yeah. 
hedge funds in those uh, Carolinas. But that's not even what's affecting it. I mean, remember this. I, I don't know if you guys saw this. I think it was like 60 Minutes or something just did a just did a report on the hedge funds buying up properties. It's only 2% of the rental properties. They own 2% of the rental properties. Everybody's freaking out. Oh my gosh, these big corporate BlackRock's going to own the whole world. Like, stop. Stop. All right? It's 2%. They own 2% of the rentals. That means Ma and Pops own 98%. We own 98%. They own 2%. So don't get this crazy, you know, oh my gosh, uh, I don't know if I want to sell to the hedge funds uh, because then we'll, we'll be a, this'll, this'll be a, a, a rental society. Stop. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I think they own like, um, like a, a million, half, two million properties total out of 143 million residential uh, units in the United States. Uh, average value, this is important because there is, there is a bunch on this list. There's a bunch on this list that was um, under 200,000 as the median sale price. And we got rid of those. Now you can certainly do this research again and look at the ones under 200,000, but 200 to 500 is the sweet spot. Because typically we make about 10% of, and it's, it's, it's fluctuated. Um, it's been kind of closer to like eight, seven, eight percent um, since the interest rates increased. But we're really pushing to get to 10% of the median price is what we want to average in our wholesale deals. So if you go after bigger deals, you get bigger profits with the same amount of effort. Same 17-step same process that we went at the top of the show, whether you're going after a property that's worth 80000 or 800000 right? The only difference is you make a lot more with the properties that are in the median sale price, right? And, and again, going back real quick to, um, to, to Flip Finder here, one of the things that I distinguish when I'm pulling my AI scores when I'm pulling these lists of properties that are a, a wholesale score of 500 or greater in Flip Finder is the average median sale price. Average median sale price in Maricopa County is 440,000 in my county. So I put this median sale price in here of, I don't know why you can't see my mouse, that's weird. Huh, uh, 440, it's right here in the, the um, there's two little um, blue uh, ovals there. Uh, at the top, the the property value four hundred forty thousand and below, because that's the sweet spot. That's the sweet spot for your cash buyers, right? Um, and then we look at six month appreciation as of yeah. We want to make sure that we're having positive appreciation. What is hot now? Where are people buying now? Not five years ago. Not a year ago. Where are they buying now? It's got to be positive. And then three-year average appreciation uh, over the, the, the average appreciation has to be over 10%. Now, why is that? Why do we want a pre, uh, areas that are appreciating, that are in this sweet spot, that have over 200,000 in a market, population growth is positive, average value is between two and 500,000, Appreciation's going. It's it's still a good market right now. It didn't take huge hits, and the three year average is over ten percent, because that's where the buyers are. That's where the buyers are. Isn't that incredible? Like we can't we can't sell the purchase agreement if there's no buyers. And the more buyers there are, the the more that they're willing to compete with each other to get those deals. It's awesome, right? So go where people are actually buying. Go where people are actually interested in flipping properties or holding properties. If you're like, I need to do, I, I, I don't want to work in my market because my market only has 10,000 people in it. Or I'm in one of these tougher markets like San Diego, like Seattle, like, uh, like uh, downtown Chicago, um, Miami. Austin, Texas, Boulder, Colorado, San Francisco. Some of these areas where um, every property sells instantly. So you need to pick another market. 
Now, can you still work in your back mar- uh, your your backyard market and pick another market? Absolutely, and I encourage you to do so because you can still find unbelievable deals in your backyard. But also, here's the here's the kicker. Here's the thing that we don't think about a bunch. Where do you want to own real estate? Where do you want to build your portfolio? You want to build your portfolio somewhere that actually appreciates. Because cash flow is not going to make you rich. It's just not. Cash flow is not going to make you rich. All that you have to consider, if you're going to build your portfolio, cash flow is going to uh, pay for all of the upkeep on that property. That's it. If you look at the, uh, and I talk about it on here a lot, because I think a lot of people are, and I certainly was, and this led me down a really, really terrible financial disaster, uh, a path of financial disaster. Because I thought, all you got to do is own real estate, get the cash flow. The cash flow pays for my expenses. Boom. <laughs> Easy peasy. But then you look and you're like, oh, it costs three grand a year just for upkeep. Every three years, there's going to be a major expense that's 10K or more. Every 10 years, the interior of a property, uh, the design changes. That's just the society we live in. We want new and cool things. We want these kind of cabinets instead of these kind of cabinets. Remember when cherry cabinets were like so hot? Ooh, got to put those cherry looking cabinets in the the kitchen. Ooh, I'm looking good. Oh, everybody's going to be impressed. They're going to come in here and they're going to rub these cherry cabinets. They're going to say, oh, Brent, you've got the best cabinets. You're incredible. And then they're gone. Nobody wants cherry cabinets anymore. It's just like nobody's going to want white cabinets here in a little bit. Things change, so you have to constantly be in putting money into your properties. Why am I going on this long soapbox uh, uh, speech here? Because what wins is appreciation. What builds wealth is appreciation. It's not your cash flow. You appreciate, you sell half your deal, your properties, and then you pay your other ones off, and now you have real cash flow. But if you have debt on properties, come on. You're, not, you're done. All that cash flow is going, I make $500 a month in cash flow. No, you don't. No, you don't. It goes right back into the property. It costs $3,500 just to turn a property, to put new carpet and paint and get it fresh for the new person to go into that property. So the reason I bring that up is not just for you and I. It's also for the savvy investors there with the deepest pockets. They already know this, guys. The pros know this. They know that they're not buying properties for cash flow. They're buying properties for depreciation and appreciation. They want to put their money somewhere that's going to make more money. Poor people make money to pay bills. Middle class make money to have good credit scores so that they can get loans for stuff they can't afford. And rich people make money to make it more money. Make baby monies from their monies. Isn't that cool? So that's why they want to be in these areas. That's why these are the top 50 areas. Let's go over it one more time, Matt, if you don't mind, for everybody that's just joining on. And in six minutes, we're going to have the incredible Dimitri Von Kamp. Is he in yet, Matt? Oh, he is in. Maybe we'll get him a little bit earlier after we get through this. Absolutely incredible. He's going to blow your mind, guys. I'm bringing on people that live thousands. They don't even live in this country, and they're, they're, they're doing an incredible amount of deals. One, because it's kind of like, hey, like what, what, are you, what are you doing with your time? These guys are crushing. They don't even live here, and they're going bananas. So it should be like that wind behind your sails to be like, yes, I can do this too. I'm going to go out and take massive imperfect action today and every day until I can start replacing myself in my business. But let's say it's on track here, Matt. <laughs> 50, top 50 markets right here. Um, let's, go, let's go 50 and up, all right? 50, Tyler, Texas, interesting. Appleton, uh, Wisconsin. I think WI is Wisconsin, yeah. Uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, another, man, the Carolinas are going bananas. Wil- Wilmington, Hagerstown, Maryland, 
Roanoke, Virginia, Clarksville, Tennessee, Spartanburg, South Carolina, South Bend, Indiana, Green Bay, Wisconsin in the house. All right. Gainesville, Florida, Hickory, North Carolina, Trenton, New Jersey, Savannah, Georgia, of course. If you've ever been to, if you haven't been to Savannah, go. It's incredible. Um, Salisbury, Salisbury, um, Maryland, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Manchester, um, New Hampshire, and it goes on and on and on. It's really interesting. I don't have any markets here that are in Arizona. None. Vesalia, California. I've never even heard of Vesalia, California. If you're from Vesalia, California, shout out to you. You're in a great market. Let us know in the comments if you're from Vesalia. That's a great word. Rolls off the tongue. Vesalia. I like that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's really, really, really incredible. We think about all these other uh, um, bigger markets, but guys, this is your this is this is the treasure trove right here. Augusta, Georgia. Oh, we've got some rhinos in Augusta, Georgia that are going bananas. Absolutely bananas. Um, you know, everybody's sleeping on Albuquerque. Nobody does. I don't know a single person that does business in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. Bakersfield is a great one. That's a great, um, a smaller market uh, that's surrounded by bigger markets. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible. So there you go, guys, the top 50 markets. Um, we're going to be updating this every 90 days. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be really cool. May maybe not on this channel. Um, but, uh, maybe it's like a product in our, in our company, uh, just to keep people updated on, on what's working. But yeah, I mean, absolutely incredible. The, um, the, uh, the top 50 markets, there you go. That leads us into, I don't know how many are in Florida, actually Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida. So maybe Dimitri, uh, is doing some deals in Pensacola, Florida. Maybe if you guys are in some of these markets, make sure that you put it in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your results in those areas. Don't be scared. Remember this guys, six to 10% of the real estate markets in distress at all times based on the U S census. So, um, there's mo way more deals than there are us. Uh, a, a study done by done. It's not even a word, a study done by, um, batch services, which are incredible. Um, show that there is between 50 and 70,000 wholesalers. Hmm. 50 to 70. Divide that by uh, 14 million. Can somebody do that? Can somebody give me that, that, that factor? Uh, because there's way more distressed property than there are uh, us going after them. So remember, it's always collaboration over competition. And the, the louder you are in the comments section and people can connect with you, the more that you can find maybe a, a, a joint venture partner. Maybe you can find somebody that wants to lend money. Maybe you can find somebody that's a few steps ahead of you. So don't be shy. Never be shy about um, sharing your results that you're having in, your, in, in the markets. And I'd love to know if you're in any one of these uh, top 50 markets. And with that, let's bring all the way in from Europe, Dimitri Von Kamp. Dimitri. Hey man, how are you? Good. Where are you, where where are you at right now? I'm in Belgium right now. Belgium. Belgium yep. and you do business where? Well, all over Florida, but um mostly southwest Florida up to and you know from Fort Myers all the way up to right above Tampa like uh, up to uh, Citrus County. So it's 12 different counties that I'm, you know, active in. So I just rotate them from one county. And then if I'm finished, I go to the next one, the next one, the next one. And I do all of them like two, three times a year. So. Awesome. So how yeah. do you, how do you, how do you rotate? Um, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, just, just go through them one by one. So I just start Lee County and Charlotte County. They're the biggest ones. So they take the longest. Yep. Um, Lee County takes like a month and then the Charlotte County and then the other ones, they're a little bit smaller. So, but you know, Lee and Charlotte County alone, they have like almost, I think almost like 200,000 vacant lots. So, you know, it can keep you quite busy. <laughs> so yeah. And you, and that's what you target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only do vacant land. The last uh, two, two, three hundred deals that I've done, they're all vacant lands. 
Two so, to three yeah. hundred deals. Yeah, the last two three hundred. Yeah. yeah. So do you, so this is this is really interesting because we had Daniel Nissimon. He lives in Tel Aviv mm -hmm. and he does mostly residential properties, right? Or right. single family or multifamily or condos, townhouses, whatever mm -hmm. it is. You're mm -hmm. going a different route. Yeah. And this makes it a lot easier to virtual, in oh, my opinion, because a lot there's easier. No, there's no showings, there's no meeting the properties, owners yeah. at the property and just standing in a vacant lot, just looking at each other, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it makes the business a lot more scalable because, um, like, right now, I just I was just, before we, you know, before I jumped on to this uh, live, I was on the uh, phone with the title company. And so just one of my buyers, he I'm under contract for seven different deals with him. And uh, they're all from different sellers, but he he's the guy, he buys everything almost from me because he just makes very small margins reselling them on the market. Yep. Um, and um, and so I send it to dozens of people, but he's always he's always like taking it, taking it, taking it. And so that's that's from one from one seller. Then there's a couple of other ones. So like I have 12 different um, deals in escrow right now, but I think with houses, I think that would be a complete nightmare because because you have two problems with houses. There's a lot of moving part, like, you know, there's a tenants, there is, um, the seller might still live in a property. You might need to help them with moving. They might not have money for, for a deposit to rent something. I mean, we all know all those situations, right? Um, yeah. so that's a lot of work and a lot of time, but with land, you have none of that. And then the second, uh, advantage with land is you're never going there. You never have to send anyone there. I mean, I do send when I close on the deals myself, which I'm doing more and more often now, I do send like an environmental specialist um, because there's a lot of problems you can have with land. You have, you have to be very careful. But besides that, there's no one going there. So it's very scalable because you can just literally do a whole state. And if you understand, if you have one good title company, they can serve that whole state. And yep. most most buy most sellers and most buyers, nobody's going to a title company anymore. Like I, I remember, people used to say, "Yeah, there's cookies there," but nobody's driving two hours anymore for cookies. That time oh. is over. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. I mean, I love land. It's just it's a nice commodity just to trade in. You know, it's it's, it's a good business. So so. All of your deals are just done over the phone. I, I mean, are you talking yeah, no. to all these property owners, or are they yeah. because it's land? They're just doing everything through email, through text, through like. Oh yeah, I I I do um I do uh, text marketing, email marketing, and cold calls. Um, yeah. I would say half of the time I don't talk to them on the phone, um, but I still. So what I realized. Wait, 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 wait. break, break that yeah. down. What do, you, what do you mean half the time you don't talk to them on the phone? You mean like the deals that you close? Yeah. How do you not talk to them? Well, because they, I, I contact them, they send a message back, and then I have like um, a standard, a standardized message that goes out. And the only thing that changes is their name, the property address, and I put a few things in there so that it's very personal, that it feels very personal. And then, um, and then they say, okay, send me the contract, and then you just, you just send a, a docu sign. But I still always ask their phone number and call them before they sign because. That way I can make some jokes with them on the phone and, you know, they can hear that I have an accent and they ask where I'm from. Then they say they had a friend who just went there on a holiday and and then, then you know, you build some report with them. And then the title company also has their phone number already. So it's always Got good. It. If, you, if you can talk to people, you should always talk to them, even if you don't have to, because yep. that way you can build more report and then it's less likely that they will open the DocuSign like you were talking about earlier and then nothing happens, right? <laughs> and then you send them an email um, which like I use I used what um, that book never split the difference. Yeah. Um, so I don't ask, hey, are you still gonna sign? So if they don't sign, then I ask them like, hey, can I maybe just cancel this and maybe um, you don't want to sell it anymore? Is that okay? I can cancel it and because I'm I I, I want to use my funds to buy another piece of land and then they immediately answer if, back and then you can reinstate it. But it's better to call with them. So you know if you can call with them, then do it. So you get per their permission to cancel the deal. And then they're like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You push them away. I mean, yeah. if, if you know the cool thing, Brent, I think you know this. Like, it, the business becomes awesome once you've done hundreds of deals because the cool thing is, it's like all of that is like a dance. And you, 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 once you've done it so many times, you exactly know, okay, this is happening, that is happening. And it's pretty funny because I'm actually, I'm buying a house right now um, in, well, we're in negotiations, in negotiations um, to buy like a, 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 a house, a pretty pretty cool house here in Belgium. And, um, 
And the real estate agent, he's, you know, I'm negotiating with him and he's doing everything that I'm always doing. And then so we're doing this dance together, but it's like, it's, it's a very difficult thing because he's a very good agent. So, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I yeah. Well, it. well, the, the nice thing is, you know, especially with land, um, it comes down to the price, right? It just comes down yeah. to the price and, and have they have they decided that they want to sell it? Yeah, okay, well, let's figure out the price, right? There's not all these little contingencies. You don't have to yeah. dance. It's, you don't have to, you could slow dance with them. You don't have to tango mm -hmm. is, what, mm -hmm. is the analogy that I'm thinking here. You know what I mean? Because there's yeah, not yeah. just too many moves that you can make there. And uh, I think it's I think it's brilliant. So where how do you... How do you, when you send over the purchase, agree? is there a minimum price that you're going after to make sure that you're getting a decent profit on these? Yeah, so it's 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 something I'm struggling with to make decisions on because the problem is I have a lot of small deals that I do, right? I have a lot right. of deals that are 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. I have two in ESCO right now. They're 1,500. And anyone would say, don't do those deals because, and I completely agree, don't do them because you'll spend this much in marketing to get them. And then you have problems you need to solve and you can't do all of that for $1,500. But the thing is, if you're doing... 20 deals a month and on average they're you know maybe five thousand dollars because you always have some bigger ones well and it and I, I, my marketing budget is less than a thousand a month and i have i have no other overhead so then it kind of makes sense to even do the small ones still but i'm i am removing the ones that are too small because it's like i mean you have to stop somewhere right um but yeah on, on average my my deal size because i was doing my numbers for this year um my deal size on average was right around eight thousand dollars this year i love um it. and but but my um my cost per deal is around forty dollars in marketing so i love it so is the I, I feel if the profit margin is high enough and if if um it doesn't take too much hours to do them then you can still do fairly small deals because people say don't do like I've, I've heard this in the past don't do any assignments under ten thousand. just refuse well but let me ask you this if you could walk down a street and you could get six people to sell you um a deal for five thousand dollars and they close in 10 days would you do it I, I think you would do it so it's all a question about you know the relation between the effort you're putting in and what you're getting out of it um and and that's that's really individual per market and per property type and everything. So, um, yeah, but for me, my, my average deal size, I really want to get it higher um, because I was doing my numbers for this year. And it's really, I mean, it's I was putting everything in graphs and looking at percentages and whatever. And it was really confrontational because more than half of my profits came from the 18% the of the biggest deals. So mm -hmm. that like... Almost 60% of the income came from 18% of the biggest deal. So that's almost like 80-20. I mean, not completely, but um, yeah. The, the, so the average deal size, I want to get it over $10,000 next year. Um, and then I'm trying to stay consistent at doing over 10 deals a month. And then, you know, so over... I feel it's pretty clean if you can run your business. You, you do over 100000 a month. And then I, I still want to try to keep my expenses under 1000 a month so that the risk is also... Because it's also a question about risk. Because if you're if you're only spending a very little on marketing, you have almost no risk. So, you know, it, you, you can't just look at the income. Because if you're if you're spending 500000 a month to get $800,000 in, in, in wholesaling fees with the whole team, well, that's awesome. But the if the five hundred thousand dollars is still there, the eight hundred thousand goes down to four hundred for one month. Well, now you're in the red, so it you also kind of have to adjust it for the risk you're taking. Yeah, so. I love it. What what tool do you use to pull the the um, list of land that you're going after? That's for free. I spent like well, sometimes I actually spend ten dollars on the on the whole list for the county. Uh, you just I, I just call the property appraiser for the county, and I just tell them hi. I just want to get um, the world list. I call it the world list. They always know what it means, and it's just a list of all the property. Everything, everything is in there. Like there's boat slips in there, and there is like you know there's land without access. There is like gas stations. Everything is in there, and then you just filter it out. And to but you to, need to know the key, right? There's a certain key to the different codes. Yeah, yeah. There's property use codes. So when you're on yes. the phone with them, you can always ask them. But it depends on the county. Some counties, they have the property use code. And then right next to it, they might have a column in the file that says, um, uh, th that actually says vacant land or 
you know, um, commercial real estate or multifamily less than five, multifamily more than five. So, and, and then, then you don't need to get it. But a lot of times they will have that. And uh, then what you do is you get someone from Upwork, you overpay them and you get someone that's really good because this is a very, very, very important. Don't, don't try to get someone for $5. So pay them $50 and then you get them to filter the, um, the list down to what you need. And you have, to, this, you have to spend a lot of time on this because it's very important. Because if you're messing up the part where you're editing the list, now you're just, I mean, you know, th then everything goes bad, of course. So, um, yeah. And then do you, do you then pull out it based on the value of the land? Yeah, I used to not do that. And then I, I would get phone calls from people and they're like, hi, um, you contacted me about this land. I got like a, a text message from you. I don't know why you contacted me because that, that thing is worthless. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I pull it up and it's selling for $800. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do anything with this. Um, what, so what, would I, be a good, what would be a good minimum? So I... It, it depends because so I, I would say about 10, 10 15,000 minimum. But again, it depends because in a hot market, you can something, it depends on a couple of things. It depends on the relationship of the assessed value and the retail value. Because in some places, 10,000 assessed means 20,000 retail. Right. In other places, 10,000 assessed means 7,000 retail. So you have to kind of, what I do is I go through like a dozen uh, lots and I kind of see what that relationship is. So you want retail minimum, I would say 20,000. Um, but it also depends how hot the market is and what type of market you have. Because for example, in Lee County, there's an area called Lehigh Acres. Everybody knows it in, in Southwest Florida. And because it's such a hot market, right? Their pieces of land are fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and you can get them all day long. You can buy and sell several pieces a week. Sometimes you can get two pieces in one day because it's such an active and hot market, right? So there, if I, I say I, I just do everything because you get pieces of land, they're worth twenty, and if you get it for like ten, which everybody would say you, that's that's not a deal. Well, it is a deal because someone will buy it from me for sixteen and sell right. it on the market for twenty, and the cash buyer will make like two thousand. And then someone would say, well, why why would they do deals for two thousand? Well, I have a cash buyer. He does forty, fifty of those things a month, and with one assistant, so they can do it. They can run a business like that. So, um, but I would say twenty thousand dollar retail is good minimum as a minimum because. Um, that way you can make minimum four or 5,000 on it. And keep in mind, this is not like a house. You have a lot of people who want to get rid of their land. Um, and the other thing I would say, you keep in mind that a lot of people, they have like six pieces of land. So you might get one seller having six or four pieces of land. And instead yeah. of making 5,000 on the deal, you make 25, $30,000 on the deal. So yeah, I would say I would say, but you need to put a minimum for sure. Probably in most areas, it's either ten thousand minimum tax assessed, or fifteen, or sixteen, or twenty. That's kind of the minimum. I love it. How many deals this year, Dimitri? For this year, a little bit over a hundred. It was a hundred and was it one hundred and three or one hundred and six? It depends on. I have a couple of deals. Well, that's that's a little bit over a hundred is close deals, but I still have. I don't know exactly. I believe 12 deals in escrow right now, but uh -huh. um, I, I had more, but I had one home run deal where, I mean, home run, it was a pretty solid deal. It was worth like 80, 90 and I got it for 50 and I was close. I, I had already um, set the funds ready to send them to the title company and I got the environmental report back and there were 10 tortoises on there. And in, in Florida, a tortoise, removing one tortoise is $6,000. So I called the title company. Like a, said, like a turtle? Yeah, like a turtle. So removing one turtle is $6,000. That's the environment. The EPA determined that. You need to bring them to like a farm where they feed them and take care of them. It's like essentially like a hotel for the turtles. So <laughs> so you need to pay for the hotel for the turtles. And <laughs> and so it, what? if you have a piece of land in Florida and it's a $50,000 piece of land like this was, and 10 turtles come on it, it's worthless. Oh so my I, gosh. I called the sellers and I said, look, I'm willing to take a risk on it. If you can reduce the price to 10,000, I'll buy it. I'll hold it for a few years and see if the turtles disappear. If they go somewhere else, then it's still, then it's again, it, it will have value again. But for now I have to cancel. So, uh, but yeah, I have some deals in escrow right now with title problems. We're solving them. There was one house that is it's crazy. There's one lot 
and the title company made a mistake for the people who bought it and the they put the mortgage from the person next door by accident that bought a house on the piece of land and so now the person next door owns the house free and clear and the mortgage oh, is on the wow. land so we're getting that removed and everything but yeah you, have, you always have title problems and things to solve so i'm thinking yeah. when all is said and done probably like 110 115 deals this year so right you're around 10, right around 10 a month yeah you're incredible Awesome. Thank you for being on here, guys. Dimitri's always active in the chat. If you have some more questions for him, make sure that you get into the chat and uh, talk to Dimitri. Thank you for joining us, Dimitri. You're the best. Yeah, you're welcome, man. It's uh, Love you, awesome. Love you, awesome. man. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, did you hear the 100 plus deals at 8K a deal? I mean, can you do the math on that? I think everybody can do the math on that. And that is, and he's spending less than $1,000 a month on marketing. I mean, maybe somebody that you should know and have in your life. He's in the chat and he's part of our channel all the time. Make sure that you're connecting with Dimitri Van Kamp, um, part of the Rhino tribe. He's absolutely incredible. Now, moving on. Woo, I'm excited about this. This is something that um, Jeremy Thornburg, my disposition manager, um, and I have put together and are refining right now. And that is the big goal. What's the big goal? The big goal is to get to a million dollars a month and make sure that we're really profitable. And so what we've been looking at is what is the most scalable? What is something that we are very, 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 very good at? And how can we build a team and a machine around um, what we're really good at and the experience that we have. So what are we really good at? One, we're really good at getting big deals. It's just a fact. The process that we follow, the, the list that we go after, the, the, our ability to negotiate, our ability to close, our ability to do all those things is top notch, right? Our process for being able to uh, have a lead come in and uh, be in the bucket for our setter or our junior acquisition manager, uh, Chad, and his ability to turn that. It's, it's on now, Matt. Yeah, it's, it syncs now. Um, sorry, we're just syncing the iPad so I can show you this diagram. Um, but we're really good at doing our lead follow-up. We're incredible at lead follow-up. We're, we're, I would say, the best in the country at lead follow-up best in the country at converting those deals. In my opinion, guys, this is not like a, oh, compete over here and do this, whatever. I'm just saying we're, our average deal size is, is incredible. It has been. Um, our, our appointments to contracts is bananas. And so how do, we, how do we expand this? How do we scale this? Well, here is the plan. Let me pull this up here. Over the next 36 months, and I'll put that in here too. This is the 36-month uh, planned. Okay. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go into 10 markets, 10 markets, because in Phoenix, we're going to get to $2 million this year. It's going to be 1.7, 1.8. We've learned a lot and we only started pay-per-click in March. And that's going to be a real important point here. Real important point is pay-per-click because all roads lead to pay-per-click. When you start out in your business, it's going to be you going out there and Get in initiating the conversations. Remember, you need to have properties that have potential for investment. You need to have a quality conversation. You need to make offers. So it's going to be um, all roads lead to pay-per-click. When you're getting started, you are doing everything you can to initiate those conversations because you don't have the budget. Well, guess what? I have the budget. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been in real estate since 2004. I've taken all of the learning lessons. I've taken massive and perfect action for a very long time. And now it's at the point where we're going to start expanding. And it's really, really, really exciting. This does not happen unless you have the right team. This does not happen unless you have your own Jackie Thornburg, Jeremy Thornburg, Chad Coulter, Chad Coulter Sr., uh, uh, Ryan Thornton. It just doesn't. you got to find these certain roles. And I'm going to break down these roles. Don't worry. It's going to be right here in this plan. All right? Now, I always assume, so we're going to go into 10 markets. I always assume in any market, I'm going to spend $200,000 in cost. 
That's just a mindset. It could be 100,000, it could be 80,000, it could be 60,000, it could be 40,000. But in my mind, I'm thinking of it like a franchise. Like, how do I, what do I, uh, what do I need to set aside to make sure that it's successful and that I have enough funds to keep this thing going and going and going? Okay. Now, listen, Brent, this isn't relatable to me. I don't, you know, this doesn't make sense. I'm just getting my first deal. This is the future. I'm going to show this whole breakdown. Right, I'm going to show. I'm going to show you step by step. I want to just set the set the table for the next 36 months of content on this channel. It's going to be like a documentary. You know what I mean? So at least you know at the start of it what it looks like. And as you're going, as you're going and using all the other tools that we talk about on this channel to go out and get your first deal, build the consistency, fire your boss, start firing yourself from certain roles in the business so that it turns into a cash flowing machine for you. Then what? Then what? Like, let's stay focused. Why not? Wait, can we make it normalized that um, that real estate entrepreneurs build real estate wholesaling businesses for the long term? And it's not just this like freshman thing. It's not this just starting thing. Well, once you learn how to wholesale, then you get into flips and then you get into uh, buy and holds and then you get into development. I think that's nonsense. I like cash machines. This is a literal cash machine. I'll show you. But I mean, wholesaling is a cash machine. So can we normalize like building long lasting businesses that run without us that we can have for the next however long we want? Let's do that. That sounds awesome because this is a new concept. I mean, it really is. There's not a lot of like go back and find some wholesaling businesses that have been around 10 years. Go find some businesses, wholesaling businesses that have been around 20 years. You're not going to find it. All right. Um, and this is the key right here. The key here is in each market. And by the way, we're going to open this up over 36 months. So this isn't all going to be right away. Um, 20 grand a month in pay-per-click. Why would we do that? Because I know I can, with the expertise that we have in pay-per-click, get four to one return. That means I put $1 in and I get $4 in return. All right. If you can run a business where 25% consistently, predictably, you, you get 25% uh, of your business goes to your marketing uh, and you don't get two over your skis with your other costs, operation costs, overhead costs, uh, costs for your talent, um, then you're going to have a wildly profitable business. You're going to have a really, really profitable business. And so I know right now, based on our stats, we're, we're at 3.9 right now this year. With the closings that we have, we just locked up seven deals in the last 11 days from pay-per-click. Everybody's sleeping right now in the business, in the industry because of the holidays. And we're going bananas with pay-per-click. Bananas with that. And so we've got the pay-per-click going. We're getting four to one. And it's going to end up being about 4.2 times uh, ROI, okay? Dollar in, 420 back. It's going to be incredible. But if we can keep it right around uh, one to four, you win, okay? And we have the budget for this because I have a cash machine. I'm not out flipping properties. I'm not out buying a bunch of rental properties right now. I want to build this. This is my rental properties. This is my rental portfolio. It's This is my cash flow machine. Anyway, I digress. P pay per click. Boom. This is where we're going to start with lead generation. We get our lead generation from pay per click. That will then go to our junior acquisition. This is Chad Coulter's team. Chad is going to run this team and he's going to have a group and it's going to be all local here. And now, as I'm thinking about it, I might make some adjustments to this plan. I'm going to talk to Jeremy and Jackie and the whole team about it. But um, at this point, this is all going to be in Phoenix. Or, or not. I mean, this could be anywhere. This could be people virtually. It doesn't really matter. But the closers, we've had this closer, and this is Ryan's team, Ryan Thornton. You've seen him on this channel. Uh, he's absolutely incredible. I mean, the guy can overcome any objection. He's just, he's, he's, he is better than I ever was times 10 with, with property owners face to face or on the phone. Um, but he's going to have his closer team. So you've got leads coming in. You got a junior acquisition team that they're going to take all these leads and they're going to warm them up. They're going to disqualify all the junk. They're going to warm them up. They're going to they're going to make sure that we're shortening the timeline for a decision as much as possible. 
And the people that want to sell their properties today, we're going to push them over or, or want to sell them, you know, and, and be on an appointment and get in, in front of the closer. It's going to go to the closing team. And right now, the way that I have it is I was going to have 10 boots on the ground. On ground. Um, and But, you know, some of these having this conversation with Daniel Nissim, as I'm listening to him today, I'm like, wow, why do I even need boots on the ground? I mean, why do I need to have like acquisition closers? Why can't they just do it over the phone? In my mind, I mean, not my mind. I know that if you're face-to-face -face versus virtual, you get 20 to 30% higher uh, per deal. 20, 20 to 30% bigger deals than uh, virtual. There's something magic about being in front of somebody, talking to them and negotiating with them face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, that's just what I've seen across coaching 3,000 people personally and being in and, and in just our own business is uh, boots on the ground is going to get you more. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to keep that. We'll see. We'll, we'll, I'll keep you posted on that. But this is going to be it. This is going to be their, their job is to get that closed. And then it's going to go to my Dispo team. The Dispo team is going to um, build our cash bar database with Investor Lift. Uh, at some point uh, as we need to build it. And then also they're going to be responsible for building up the cash buyer database, but they're going to be, this is going to be Chad, uh, this Chad's, this Chad, uh, his dad, Chad senior, who's just an absolute stud, former FBI agent. Come on I'm telling you these, the, the, the cheat code for, for unbelievable acquisitions. And, uh, and, and, and by the way, Dispo is a very big, um, sales role as well, if you don't know, but a little bit more analytical, not as much emotions, touchy feely, but more uh, analytical type. Former law enforcement guys, I mean, just go on LinkedIn and start recruiting. Start recruiting because they go 20 years and then they're done, right? They get a pension, then they got to start their second career. So they're like 40 years old. Like they got a lot of, a lot of tread on their tires. You know what I mean? They got a lot of room to, to, to grow there. So um, Chad Sr. is going to be running our Dispo team. And it's really interesting right now what Chad Sr. is doing is um, he's got our list uh, that we've built over years and years and years. And he is sending out two emails every single day of other people's deals. We get permission to send out other people's deals and our own. Um, but because he's sending out uh, emails twice a day, we get a really good idea, really get a good uh, thumb on the pulse of uh, what the cash buyers are looking for. And so it affects what we pull in uh, flipfinder.ai. You know what I mean? What we pull there, what, what we're targeting with pay-per-click, all that stuff. And uh, it's really, really critical because you know as well as I do, if you're only selling like one or two or 10 or 20 deals a year, you're not really getting an idea of what's going on with the cash buyer market. But if you take other people's deals and send them out with permission, and we don't mark it up at all, we just charge the buyer um, anywhere from two to three grand per deal. It's not even about like a big money maker. It's more like building the relationships and having the thumb on the pulse of uh, what the cash buyers are looking for. But Chad Senior is going to build it out in each of these markets and and sell the deals. And then Jeremy and Jackie will be in charge of all of it. They'll be in charge of running it and making sure that it's really smooth. And uh, I'll be here in front of you guys, in front of the camera, doing this thing. You know what I mean? I mean, isn't that great? I love it. Anyway, so that's the plan. That's the plan is to uh, get to the point where we're spending 20000 a month of pay-per-click that's all in-house. Jesse, my pay-per-click guru, is literally down the hall right now. Um, I'm sure we're getting several leads today. Um, and I think we've got a couple appointments today here in Phoenix, but to get to $12 million a year, 2 million in Phoenix, and then 10 million in, uh, other markets that we're going to expand into. It's awesome. And, um, I own, uh, I was one of the first, if not the first, uh, Joe homebuyer franchise owner, Joe homebuyers a group out of uh, Salt Lake, Utah. They're absolutely phenomenal. And they do trainings. Uh, for acquisitions, they do all these incredible things. Uh, they they, um, they 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 really understand how to keep things organized, and it's just a good brand recognition. So I'll probably buy 
not probably, I'll buy franchises in each of those 10 markets and then, um, and then put it all under that umbrella. But I can run it all mostly from here. I'll probably, I'll probably get the 10. I will. I, I just know myself. I'll get 10 really top tier talent, talented acquisition managers, closers in each one of those markets. <clears throat> and then I'll close it. And then we'll just, I'll close it. No, I'll, I'll just, I'll get to it a, a four to one, spend 20, get 80. It's a million bucks each market. Sounds great on paper. That's why I'm going to document this and it's going to be really cool. Um, but let's go big. You know what I mean? I don't know any, like, there's some companies that, that claim a lot. Um, I know that once you look under the hood, uh, it's, not, it's not as much as they claim. Some people have some really big months. 500,000. We do 500,000 a month. Once, you know. You know what I mean? Um, so I just want to be transparent so that you guys can follow. Follow along and, and participate and, uh, and see what this plan uh, shakes out to be, what the challenges are. That way you guys can navigate around them. Is Raphael here? Do we know? Where the heck is Raphael? Did we tell him 1130? He'll be here soon. Oh, he just pulled in. Um, yeah, so guys, that's that's the master plan. That's the master plan to get to a million dollars a month. Now, my expectations of a million dollars a month, um, yes, it's going to be four to one. 25% is going to go to the um, marketing. I think that with team and bonus, and really top talent, I think it'll it'll take my net. You know, the more income you make, the the typically the net starts, you know, uh, getting squeezed. I think if I could keep this thing at, uh, <clears throat> you know, 25% net, 25 to 30% net, eh, probably 25, let's just be honest. 25% net, uh, it's, it's a nice net for the year. 12 million times 0.25. Can somebody do that? Anybody? What is that? It's a good amount. Um, and then that that's the money that I'm going to take and go buy apartments with or commercial. What is it? Three million. Three million. Nice. That's nice. That'll be good. Um, and so <clears throat> take that, take those funds and then, uh, which is, which is going to be pretty passive um, because Jeremy and Jackie, you're going to run that thing. And, um, and we'll work towards you know ownership, and uh, and splitting that with Ryan and Chad and and Jeremy and Jackie. I think just having them be able to have a ridiculous amount of income uh, coming in uh, for retirement for whatever for them buying assets is is the goal. Um, so it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be really cool. So strap in, get ready. It starts first quarter twenty twenty. For if you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Get let's get going. I know that most of you guys that are on here live are already subscribed, but all of you incredible, beautiful real estate entrepreneurs that are watching the replay of this, make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Put a comment in here on your thoughts on the plan. Put your comments on the thought of the top 50 markets. Put your thoughts on uh, how to virtually wholesale. If we missed anything that you would like for me to. Um, to mention in upcoming shows, then we will do that. And we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll put that in here as well and uh, just do more content around it. So there's no mystery. Because listen, we're not in, the, that's the thing. Like information is kind of, kind of a, a, a commodity. You know what I mean? Like I'm not afraid to share anything that, that's going on because I mean, it's out there. You can find it anywhere. You can find everything that you want to do in this business on somebody's YouTube channel or, or, or um, podcasts or, or whatever. But we're, we're in the social age. We're in the community age. We're in the age where you need to have cheerleaders. You can't, to do this by yourself takes so much time. It takes so much time. I'll give you all the information that you, that you want. But if you really want to get the discipline, because, you know, discipline takes you places that motivation can't. Um, cause you could get motivated and do this for a couple of times. If you want discipline, you, you're around disciplined people. You're around a tribe of people. You're around a community of people that are going to push you and that are doing amazing things, really doing amazing things, not talking about it, not getting stuck in the education loop, not giving you advice, but they're not closing any deals. None of that. Let's do two celebrations. And will you go out and get Raphael? I don't know what he's doing. He's probably doing a deal or something. 
Kevin Moses. Closing my first deal this Friday, $4,500 fee, property located in Anderson, Indiana, my location, Baltimore, Maryland. Virtual, it works. On to the next one. Oh, my gosh, Kevin, you are awesome. Come on. There's some bell ringing for everybody that was missing it. Samuel Kemp did my first deal at 17 in Lynchburg, Virginia. I assume he is 17 by that statement. Absolutely incredible. 17 years old. Samuel, don't leave us hanging, bro. What'd you make? What'd you make? I don't care if you made a dollar, if you made $100,000. Let us know what you made. Congratulations. 17 years old. Come on. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is great. Congratulations on that. Um, guys, listen, uh, celebrate anybody that's, if you have closed a deal, if you're working, ah, 20K from Samuel. 20, 20K at 17. Oh my gosh, what I would have done with seven, 20K at 17 years old. Yeah, it would be gone. <clears throat> it would totally be gone. So save that money, Samuel. Save that money for sure. Absolutely incredible. Well, let's go while we're waiting for Raphael, for everybody that is uh, missing out. Matt, if you're able, can you change it back to the um, to the laptop here so that we can go through the um, the 50 top markets for virtual wholesaling for 2024? Here we go. Again, Orlando, Charlotte, Columbus, Indianapolis, Providence, Rhode Island, Grand Rapids, Tulsa, Worcester, Greenville, Albuquerque, Bakersfield, Knoxville, El Paso, Allentown, Columbia, Charleston, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Winston, North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Portland, Maine. Um, we've got Fayetteville, Arkansas, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Boom. And Lexington, Kentucky, top 25 markets right there. And that leads us in, boom, to our final guest to round out this show. Put the mic over here so that he can bring it on. He was on so many shows here. Bring it in here, Rafael Cortez. Give it up for Rafael. Hey! Hey! <laughs> I know there's a standing ovation going on right now. Thank you all. Thank you all. Guys, you guys don't know this, but Raphael smells so good. I don't know what it is, but it's some Natural sort of musk. Like, is it? And that's what it is. That's it. Well, <laughs> there you go. We're talking virtual wholesaling, Raph. What awesome. are you? What are you doing? You're doing virtual wholesaling. You've been doing virtual wholesaling. Um, before you were sending out a bunch of text messages, are you still doing it with uh, text message marketing being what it is? How do you, how do you handle boots on the ground? Do you have boots on the ground or is it all virtual? Wilson. So <clears throat> what we started doing, we started deploying, um, JV, um, uh, partnerships in, in certain markets, right? So okay. first thing that we do is pick the market that we're going to go virtual in. It's got to be a market that makes sense, guys. Like you can't just, you know, throw spaghetti. We talked the about it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, and, uh, so you, you do that. Uh, yeah, we are doing uh, cold calling. We're doing SMS, but we're keeping that a secondary, um, uh, marketing strategies. A lot of the stuff that's, that's working right now is, is, um, yeah, door knocking goes a long way if you're able to tap into, you know, some, some of that stuff, but, um, dude, I, th I feel like we, we made a shift into the results that we were getting and they're still there. Don't get me wrong. But with uh, with cold calling and, and SMS, like you have to bolt on uh, inbound lead strategies like PPC. Yeah. I mean, you guys are killing it yeah. with pay per click. Yep. So um, we're doing uh, pay per click. We're doing uh, pay per lead as well. Yeah. Um, those can be a little pricey, maybe a little scarier to you know to get into it. Mm -hmm. So don't shy away from the from the calling because that still works. Sure. So we're still doing uh, uh, calling. We're still doing SMS. Make yeah. sure that you're complying with your with your areas. But what markets? Uh, yeah. So right now we opened up South Florida. We have Jacksonville. We have Tampa. Uh, we have um, New Mexico. We rolled out New Mexico. We're in Vegas Where? as well. Um, All of El New Mexico. No, El Paso. Really? Yeah. Or nice. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, don't tell me Albuquerque. No, not Albuquerque. Um, yeah, it's Albuquerque. on there. Yeah, yeah number. Yeah. It's number ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're there. So, so, um, and then uh, we're doing El Paso, Texas. Um, 
and then uh, we're we're opening up. Uh, we're looking at some areas in Cali. Yeah, like that one have like that one. Those haven't launched yet, but we're looking at, at a couple. Bakersfield, bro. <clears throat> and the uh, the process is, is is the same. You know, you come in. So I like to segment stuff in primary and secondary markets. Primary markets are anything with over three hundred thousand people in population. Yep. that's what I call it. Yep. And then secondary markets are obviously under three hundred thousand, right? So, so a few things to kind of watch out for when when you're you're thinking about doing virtual if you're going to supplement like your your wholesaling right it's it's you know get acquainted with the area that you're in mm -hmm. and then if you have to reach out like don't be don't be afraid to do it because the model that we have man like we we can do it everywhere so what do you mean reach out so reach out to different markets like so if yeah. you if you uh, yeah if you're thinking about reach listen, out to who um no 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 like I was talking about researching oh. like reaching yeah reaching out into different uh, different it. areas of the country yeah. and, and and tapping into into um um you know different just different possibilities different markets like for example phoenix we've talked about it a thousand times right yep. super competitive here yep. um but you know the market is different in i mean in tampa we get from the same amount uh, of money that we spend we usually get a better roi right love it yeah so what about boots on the ground um boots on the ground they are very important uh we uh, do have them yeah yeah so like acquisition <clears throat> managers um no not acquisition we close everything virtual so we are acquisitions are virtual right but when we have everything yeah. you're not you're not doing your offer presentation in person at all right right we're not like so we, give us your process so okay so um for the um the virtual stuff right one of the things that you want to do you want to make sure that you built you put together like you know we call it a power team right right but talk to you put together your title company whoever it is yeah. you know that, that okay. it's going to be escrow officer, you know, escrow title officer company, closing yeah, attorney in that mix, you have real estate agents. You also have notaries. Um, notaries are a huge asset. They're, they're a big resource. They're willing. I mean, they, they go around mobile notaries. They go around uh, taking paperwork to, you know, people. Left and, they're used to being out there, right? Yeah. Uh, so we use mobile notaries to take pictures of properties whenever we have to. They can come in, you know, and, or, you know show up with the paperwork as yeah. well. Um, do they take pictures? Yeah, they've done it. Yeah. How do you get the pictures usually, though? If it's not the mobile notary... Um, how do you, how do you get the pictures of the property? You have the seller do it? Yeah. So the, you send them a checklist <clears throat> or something. Yeah. I mean, basically super simple instructions, right? One of the, uh, one of the things that we have on the, on the checklist for the closer when they're, you know, when they're doing their thing, um, it's to prep and, and can, you know, set up front expectations and, uh, and prep them. There's going to be a, you know, a, a few things that we're going to need, right? Well, some of them are going to be pictures and then access to the property, yada, yada. So we kind of, I mean, it's a simple coaching. Basically you step on the corner, like you go to the corner of the room. We tell this to the sellers, go to the corner of the room, hold the camera mid, you know, mid, mid high thing, yeah. your body, and then take a picture of the entire thing. Right. And then do three pictures of each room yep. and then give us five pictures of the outside on the, on the back. And they're fine with that. Yeah. Outside of the front. Yeah. For the most part, whenever we can't get them because we have an older person or, you know, a million things. Yeah. Um, usually the, or they don't live there and it's vacant. Yeah, they you know? haven't yeah. seen the property in years. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a notary come in and do that kind of stuff. Awesome. So notaries, um, newer real estate agents are also, you know, pretty, pretty game. That's for. what Daniel Nissim. So Daniel Nissim in Israel yeah. has, you know, calls the top teams to say, hey, <clears throat> you know, the people that are just starting out will pay you 50 to $75 yeah. to do these little things. Are you paying per or are you just saying, hey, we'll give you some some leads? No, we listings? do per. You do? Yeah, we do. And we also do, I mean, we have something, we'll push the leads over. So, yeah. Yeah, but we still pay them for, for the time. So your sales, you're telling me that your sales can do everything on the phone? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing uh, so Are they losing <clears throat> deals to people that'll go meet them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. People need to know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so um, tracking KPIs and closing ratios and everything. In person, the I mean, the the closing, they're way higher. Right. Yeah. So over the phone, you're always, there's always going to be, you know, that uh, that gap, right? You have to supplement it with volume. Yep. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Like somebody shows up to the door, you're always going to have that better connection, better rapport. So break this down for <clears> me. So... A lead comes in. Do you have just one acquisition manager hold that lead the whole time? Yeah. Okay. And so they hold the lead the whole time. They're going through it. They're trying to nurture it. They're trying to get to the point where they're 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 making the offers, right? And then 
they send a DocuSign, they do a Zoom call, they do FaceTime. Like, how do they go over the, the purchase um, agreement? So we do have it. We do. I mean, we have the CRM built out and everything. So it's it's it flows pretty pretty nicely when it's, you know, when it goes into the CRM. There's there's a set of things that happen in sequence. Yeah. So we have this whole acquisition section. Um, By the way, Rafael they, built my CRM. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's not cheap, but if you have a team, it is a must-have. It's absolutely incredible. Go yeah, ahead. You don't want to start off with it. You want to no. you want to get into no. it after you have some some traction, right? Yeah. Um, and um, that's when it's worth it. So, but you, we have we have the uh, so we have that entire sequence in there. You know, automations, drop clauses, and everything. So the, the calls come in from lead generation. They yeah. they pre-qualify condition, timeline, motivation, and price, and we push it over as a prospect to acquisitions. And then they get on, the, on this. I mean, they get hit like right away, right? Um, and, um, and they get on this queue for follow-up is if needed, uh, but they go through the process of, of sometimes we'll do zoom calls. We have done them. Mm -hmm. So it's something that just, you know, I train the acquisition sure. the reps to, to put, you know, in front of them. Yeah. Hey, listen, we can jump on a zoom call real quick or, you know, FaceTime you or do whatever. Right. Um, most of the time it doesn't happen. They're just going over the phone. Uh, they click a button, the CRM publishes the, uh, it creates a PDF for the contract that's signed ready and they mm. click another button and shoot it out. So it makes it to the seller's inbox. Um, a lot of the times it happens while on the call. Right. So like we try to push. Best. Yeah, we try to push for that. Hey, listen, are you in front of a computer right now? Okay, cool. Um, and uh, we'll send the contract out. They'll open it up and then we'll just walk them through mm. everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, it, we try to be as thorough as possible. It's not going to be the same as if you were in person, but I mean, it's it's a close second and it helps you close a you know, ton of deals. Doesn't this look like the Sea of Cortez? <clears throat> Bro. Come on. You're speaking my language right now. <laughs> this is this is my cabin. Anybody who knows Brent, like yeah. his cabin is his happy place. Yeah. The beach is my happy place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, so okay, you've got it, you got it running. They're making the offers. You're getting it. Uh, what about your buyer appointments? Who's uh, running the buyer appointments if it's occupied? So on the buyer uh, appointment, this is where it gets a little tricky. One of the things that you want to do if you're tapping into a, a virtual market and you don't have the relationships yet and everything, blasting it out is going to create chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be one. The first thing that you want to do is sign up to every wholesaler's, uh, you know, um, email list yeah. and get to know them. Like start building relationships with. Just call them up. Yeah, yeah, call them up. I mean, get in there. They have, you know, we all have our, num our phone numbers in there. So yeah. like who's direct to seller, find the direct to seller ones and then try to J actually create a JV partnership with them. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of buyers, you know, in this, in this area or whatever, I'm, I'm doing a lot of marketing and uh, you know, teeing stuff up like that. It gets, it gets tricky, but it, it like that whole portion really becomes a relationship. Thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've tried it where the, uh, the real estate agents, you kind of, you know, manage the, the walkthrough. Yeah. Um, it's panned out a handful of times. Most of it, you know, it hasn't because they don't have all the all the info on it. Yeah. Same thing for the notary. Yeah. So to us, it's okay. Let's just go to a JV partner in that area and then you know dispo it that way. Um, so yeah, we'll do a battlefield. What account. are you? What are you? How much of the deal <clears throat> are they taking the dispo company? You um, know what I mean? If it, if if you can make twenty grand on 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 this so, uh, assignment, how much of that can people factor in? That that somebody that that's going to dispo your deals three k okay so included in the in the in the our buy our sell price yeah three k and then they can add a fee on top I mean if they can sell it for higher awesome more power to them so you're going listen I want to make twenty in this I'll give you three of it so yeah. I can net uh, seventeen whatever you yeah. can sell it for on top of it's yours yeah and I love that bro and I we've had that. we've had guys I mean just kill it yeah like, yeah I mean sell it for way way higher yeah you know to the point where they make more money than us it's like well man, they have the buyers good good deal yeah they have like, the buyers you've, you've done the legwork in that area yeah it's perfectly fine let's do more. <laughs> How many markets do you want to be in? Um, I don't. I, I don't really have like a set number. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm going for quality, really. Like it's it's I I'm gonna tap into. Uh, I still have another maybe seven or eight markets that I want to test out, mm -hmm. um, and then just you know maybe bring it back down to five. Yeah, you know so some some areas where we build the relationships, we build the buyers, we build you know the the boots on the ground, yeah. JV partners, and that sort of thing. So I love what you said there with getting on their lists, building the relationships with them. <clears throat> Taking the 3K, yeah. putting it out there. One, because here, here's the absolute fact. 
When you go into a new market, typically it's going to take you six months to really understand the numbers yeah. that the cash buyers are looking for, whether it be up or down, whether it be <clears throat> you're, you're, you're pricing your stuff way too cheap or you're locking up deals way too high based on what's going on in that specific market. So having somebody that's in that market that can go, bro, that you need to get it lower. Yeah. You need to get it way lower for, for it to be able to be sold. I know I could sell it for this amount. Like if anybody in the country reach, reaches out to Jeremy, right, yeah. and goes, hey, what do you think this deal would sell for in Phoenix? He would know in yeah. anywhere in Arizona. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I would sell for this, right? Yep. Having that kind of information and that <clears throat> kind of experience is so worth it because you will pay the stupid tax way more if you just go into there and you're you're pulling – okay, here's some cash buyers and putting it out to them and seeing if it sells, well, right? It makes the entire thing work, man. Yeah. Um, the, uh, on the primary and secondary markets thing, like we have different buy prices. We have oh, different sure. thresholds. So yeah. primary markets, yeah, we can offer a little higher. The population is there. The activity with buyers is there. Secondary markets, I mean, they're small. For example, like here, in, you know, we can look at Yuma, right? That's definitely a secondary market. Yeah. Um, and population is not that small, but the price points are going to be, you know, different. Awesome. Like buyers are looking for different spreads. So it's, it's to us, it's just an easy way to kind of understand. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you fine tune it once you tap into it. Will you show everybody that iPad you have on your wrist right now? Look how big this, this iWatch is. Bam. That is the biggest iWatch that's, of all time. Nobody has a bigger iWatch than Raphael. That's where I watch my telenovelas. Oh, is that where you watch them? <laughs> Thank you, Raph. Net, for, Netflix for being and chill. Here. This is what it is. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> thank you. They, and that's it, guys. Between Listen, between Daniel and Dimitri, I want to thank them both. They did an incredible job really breaking down their, their process and Raphael really rounding it out with uh, how to get the cash buyers, how to get the sellers to take some pictures yourself. Guys, you could do this anywhere. You could do this with a computer and a phone on a beach or in the mountains or from your house, wherever you live, We're if you live training. internationally. I mean, we have we have students in Africa, in Australia, in the UK, in, in, um, in Europe, uh, obviously in Israel, a lot of a lot of incredible wholesalers in Israel. Um, it's absolutely incredible. So um, don't let your location stop you. Don't let anything stop you. I mean, if you if you're a subscriber to this channel, you should have all obstacles removed uh, so that you can go out. And again, massive imperfect action. That's it. Just make sure that you're talking to people every single day, because the fact is the more people you talk to, the luckier you're going to be. And a deal of a lifetime comes around once a week. We locked up a deal, Raph, last week. It'll be 100K. Easy, easy 100K. Right. We, we got the, the, the lead pay-per-click, 9 a.m. Yep. Ryan's there, 11 a.m. And it's signed up and done. And we're going to close on it this week because I want to close on those bigger deals and then put it out. Yeah. Because I want to make sure that uh, that we have ownership of it before we put it out. But I'm telling you, every single week, this is the greatest business of all time. Everybody's sleeping on wholesaling. They think that wholesaling is just the, the first step to other steps. It's listen, you could build an incredible cash machine um, in in and and have very little risk because you're not doing these big rehabs. You're not doing these, you're not building this big portfolio that people can totally destroy your properties. You're putting the properties under contract, under a purchase agreement, you're selling that purchase agreement, and you're building a business around that. It's incredible. If you need any resources, wholesalinginc.com, wholesalinginc.com. If you want to pull the hottest and most motivated property owners, it's flipfinder.ai. That's it. That's it for the show. Thanks for being it. on here. I Bro, love you, bud. Always a You're pleasure. the best. That's You're awesome. Best. All right, love let's bring on. everybody in. Come here, come here with Alejandra and uh, Luke and Matt. Guys, we are here. Uh, we love you guys. Remember, keep your house clean, uh, protect your health, and increase your value to the world. You'll live an incredible life. Love you. See you soon.